Hello, I'm Sky Matsuhashi, founder of SmartPokerStudy.com, the place for poker players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Poker people, in episode 56, I added some killer stats to your essential HUD and taught you how to practice utilizing them through purposeful hand history reviews. Hey, poker people, thanks for tuning in, thanks for telling your friends, and thank you for spreading the word, because that's how we grow. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Audible. I know you like audiobooks to help you pass your commute time, laundry folding time, mowing the lawn time, all that jazz. So Audible has over 180,000 titles from leading audiobook producers. My listeners get a free trial to Audible and an audiobook of their choice when they sign up through www.audibletrial.com slash study. They even have the mental game of poker on audiobook. And yowza, another week has gone by and it's time for some Q&A action. We've got four questions today, so let's get right to it. And everything I discuss can be found in the show notes for the episode at uh, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod57. So we heard a great question from Ace last week, but today, someone's asking him a question. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. How can I ever repay you? Well, the reward would be good. There is some damage to my car. It's a high-performance machine, so I had to fill it with premium. (laughs) Would you like for me to take your pants off instead? Gee, let me think. Um, sure. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, 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 Pete! We're real friendly around here. Whoa! Ooh, good answer, Ace. Good answer. That's, you know, that's a no-brainer. It's like calling a 100 BB shove with pocket aces. You're happy to do it. Okay, this next question comes from Amir. Morning, Sky. I was looking at your information on 6 max small blind play. It's 14% opening. Looks very small. I never played 6 max or online before, and I'm looking for any help on small blind play or ranges in general. Let me know if you can help. Thanks for the question, Amir, and I'll take this opportunity to make a huge correction. There is no way that I'm only opening 14% in the small blind. I think at the time when I made the podcast, I had tightened my small blind range considerably down to like 28% from 40-45% or so. But after I did a little bit more blind work and studying my opponents in the big blind, my small blind opening range has widened considerably. Sometimes I go as high as 100% in, in any one session at a, at a table, and that's all based on my opponents. See, in my HUD, I have a total fold to steal stat, which shows me how often a player defends his blinds. Well, I also have a very specific stat called fold big blind to small blind steal within my steal pop-up. So in the games I play, I encounter lots of players who fold their big blind like 80% or more, and you can't pass up the opportunity to steal from these guys. My standard open is to three big blinds. So let's say I raise in the small blind to three big blinds. I'm only risking 2.5 big blinds to win the four big blind pot, so my steal only needs to work 62.5% of the time, which is 2.5 divided by 4. Uh, if he's folding any more than that, then I'm making money with each open that I make in the small blind. And the reason why it's 2.5 to win four is because you don't count your blind that's already out there. That's dead money. That belongs to the pot. Right now, when I raise it to three big blinds, I'm risking only 2.5 additional total. So if I couple, or if you can find an opponent where you can couple a high fold big blind to steal stat with flop honesty, then you've got a great recipe for making some money. When they do decide to call you and the board doesn't hit them so well, or it can be a scary board, for example, deuce 3-7 or king king 4, throw out that c-bet and expect to fold most of the time. If you have the fold to c-bet in position stat in your pop-up like I do, this can show you how often he folds to c-bets when he's in position, which can give you a little more confidence in your plays. So because I open so much from the small blind now, some of my more astute opponents, you know, the regs, the thinking players, they're picking up on this and they defend 
just even more often than than they probably should, but they know that I'm stealing a lot, so they do so. And that's just fine. When this happens, I simply tighten my opening range from like 80% maybe down to 30 or 40 or sometimes even less, even tighter, you know? So when they fight back, I'll have a much stronger hand and a stronger range than they do, and I can get value out of them, uh, you know, post-flop because they think I have any two cards because I've been raising so much. Alrighty, thanks again for that question, Amir, and for this chance to to correct my earlier mistake. Alrighty, on to question three. This one's from David. Hi, Sky. I would really appreciate some advice. I have started a study group to study the book Poker's One Percent by Ed Miller over on the Red Chip Poker Forums. This were or there was some discussion about starting a study group, but no one seemed to want to commit to a time, so I took the bull by the horns and extended an invite. The response was really good, with about eight people wanting to join. The problem is I have no idea about study groups. The only study groups I've been in were in university and typically degenerated rapidly into drinking sessions. I don't think that's an option here. This will be a virtual study group with people spread across the world in many locations. So time zones will be challenging for setting up live group discussions, particularly for me because I'm in Asia and I'm only available for a limited time each evening. As the instigator, I also think people will defy, not defy, defer to me for leadership, which is not my preference because I'm not the most organized person. Person. I'd appreciate any thoughts you have on what the elements of a successful study group are. Also, is there any etiquette around using the forums for this? I plan to reach out to Split Suit, but I wanted to engage you first. Thanks, David. Alrighty, well, that's a that's a great question, David. And I love how you took the bull by the horns and decided to put this thing together yourself. But now that you did, you know, it's totally up to you to lead it. I'd recommend keeping this as a text-based studies study group, so no Skype or anything, because of the limitations you mentioned, as well as you not really wanting to lead in the first place you know keep it simple keep it text and you can do this in the forums but just know that anybody can get in there and respond unless split suit or you have a way of locking it down another option is to create a private facebook group and only allow access to those you met or you meet in the forums who want to be part of the study group this will prevent any poachers from learning about the lessons in the book without actually doing the reading, studying, discussing with you guys, if that's what you want. And effective study groups need to be structured and guided. You are the guide here, so you need to create the structure. It doesn't matter that you don't have much experience with good study groups. You've seen bad ones in college, so just don't let it turn into that. Nip problems in the bud and be respectful in all your communications. I would start a thread devoted to this study group. Put up some group behavior rules around respect and responsibility in the very beginning so that you have something to refer back to uh, or to fall back on in case you need to kick somebody out for being douchey or something. Start each discussion or, you know, start the discussion off within the thread by giving a poker's 1% syllabus that you'll follow for the duration. It's up to you how you want to break this up, but make it something that you feel comfortable with. If you want it to last six weeks, but others want four or eight weeks, just stick to your guns as you're the leader. Be respectful, but firm in your decisions. If they want out, no problem. Try to make each week follow natural divisions within the contents. I have this book, and it really isn't arranged in a standard chapter-by-chapter format. So you'll have to figure out what makes sense to you. And you need to start off each week with some discussion questions, or even do one per day, you know. Make sure you're, you're responding to all questions and posts as well, assuming they need a response. And, of course, you want to encourage opinions and responses from others. You can also throw in hand history reviews that illustrate points and and elicit further discussion, and ask that others do the same thing. Ultimately, though, you just want to be the leader. It doesn't matter that you don't have much study group experience, or you're not that organized. So what? Just act as if. You know, appear confident in your decisions and your posts, and the others will follow. The fact that you come up with some etiquette rules and a syllabus will go a long way toward establishing your leadership of the group. Treat this as the opportunity it is. A great chance to learn from a good book with others and to practice your leadership skills. Have fun and good luck, David. I know you'd like to win a free $10 every Tuesday to jumpstart your online poker career. So make sure you sign up for an America's Card Room account through me for 27% rake back and a 100% first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Just use offer code SPSPOD in all caps. Enter the code, create your account, make your first deposit, then email me your newly minted ACR screen name and you'll be entered into the weekly drawing for a free $10. I'll announce the winner in the podcast every Tuesday and transfer the $10 to your America's Cardroom account. 
and soon we'll be holding weekly free rolls exclusive to my listeners. So get in on the action and open your own America's Card Room account today by clicking the banner at the top of this episode's show notes or go to smartpokerstudy.com slash ACR for more details and your chance to win $10 weekly. Make sure you use that offer code SPSPOD. Alrighty, today's final question comes from Rob, who has sent in some questions before. He says, um, you know, referring to the previous questions he sent in, sorry to be such a pain in the ass. I'm planning on doing your 30 day poker study challenge. Can you tell me how to record my gameplay to review? Well, that's a great question, Rob. I use a screen capture software called Bandicam to record my game tape. It's killer, super easy to use, and is pretty darn inexpensive. You can load the videos directly into YouTube as well. No editing or formatting needed. As long as you have a microphone, you know, either an external mic uh, or an internal one in your laptop, it'll record whatever part of your screen you set it to, as well as your audio, both your spoken audio and whatever's coming through the computer. You know, you can record your video gameplay if you want with this even. Um, I am an affiliate for Bandicam, so if you go to smartpokerstudy.com slash Bandicam, which is B-A-N-D-I-C-A-M. It'll take you to my affiliate page where you can read up on the software and download it. And if you decide to purchase it, it'll support the show. So I appreciate all the support out there. Uh, and also, Rob, good luck recording your first game tape. And this is for Rob and for everyone else out there. When you record your first game tape video, put it up on YouTube and send me the link. I'd love to watch it and give you any feedback. Oh, and a great bonus for having a screen capture software, you can record webinars with it. So if I sign up for a webinar, I'll start recording at the beginning in case I need to leave or I want to watch it again in the future. Not all webinar creators send out video replays, so it's great to have a copy of your own. And in case you missed it, episode 11 was all about game tape. You know, recording your poker play for later study and improving your game. You can use it to find leaks, increase your concentration, or even to spot simple mistakes you didn't know that you were making. You know, you can catch tilt that creeps up on you, and you can dissect your opponents through game tape as well. So go back and download episode 11 for that. Alrighty, thanks uh, for that question, Rob, and keep them coming. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Increase your steal frequency from the small blind. Most players don't defend often enough to make steals unprofitable, so just start doing it more. Consider your opponent's stats before you do so. Tighten up your ranges if they defend a lot, and widen them more if they defend very little. This is great for any kind of poker you're playing, whether it's cash, sit and goes, MTTs, no limit hold'em, PLO, stud, whatever the case, start stealing more when you believe your opponents fold a lot. Now it's your turn to take action and Scooby Dooby do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. Thank you so much for listening today, and thanks again to Ace, Amir, David, and Rob for sending me those killer questions. If you're not already there, head over to the show notes page for everything discussed today at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod57. Hit me with any feedback through the show notes or send me an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. And please send me those questions. I love them. And we've got an iTunes review that came in from Fyraga. He titled it Simple, Amazing, Effective, Five Stars. Sky is the mentality life poker coach I never knew I needed. As a mediocre winner at the microstakes, I have led a highly unfocused attempt at plugging leaks only to open up gaping holes in my mental game and willpower to embrace the grind. Sky gives clear, concise, and effective advice in how to manage your thought processes and grow as an individual. I am just now starting my journey through this podcast and am still a few months behind, but I have to force myself to stop listening too much so I can... St- stop and properly absorb everything that's being taught. I don't expect that listening to this podcast alone will do anything to affect my win rate, but I am now setting more clear goals in how to grow as a player and a person. Sky's attitude and delivery are infectious. He relates to the listener by providing his experience experiences, and he challenges you, literally, to forge your own path to achieve your goals and overcome your obstacles. This is the first review I've ever left for a podcast. That's how much I've enjoyed this series. Thank you for your generous contribution. Wow, thank you so much, Fyraga. 
those were those were incredibly nice words and i really do appreciate it uh that is just super sweet and for everyone else i love it when people say nice things so leave me a review or send me an email i love to hear it all righty poker people be sure to come back for tuesday's podcast where i hit part three of maximizing your hud we'll talk pop-ups of course word of mouth is the best advertising and I so thank you for sharing the show with other poker people. It only grows with your help, so I'm asking you to share it with someone who will get value from it just as you do. Have them go to iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, their favorite podcatching app, or the show notes to begin their journey. You might want to recommend to them episode number 9, where I taught you why volume sessions are so important, how to increase the volume you play, and I gave you great strategies for how to get the most out of each volume session. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I'm